you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Welcome into our podcast and live Bible study here at uh, Abiding in Christ Ministries. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to discuss Matthew chapter 3, a little bit of Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, and John the Baptist's encounter with Jesus Christ. Can you hear good, baby? It's good. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your spirit, Lord. Father, help us to empty ourselves out and open up our hearts and our minds to you changing us, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that the word would not fall on a hard, stony heart, Lord, but it would fall on good ground, that the word would fall on a heart that that wants to be transformed, a heart that wants Christ, a heart that 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 wants to love God and walk with God, a heart that is open to the work of God, to the will of God. Father, I pray, Lord, that your word will fall on our hearts, Lord, as we open up our hearts, Lord. Let no flesh, let not our flesh, our emotions, nothing, Lord, get in the way of the Holy Spirit doing a work in our lives, Lord. Father, I pray that we would open up our minds and our spirits, Lord, to receive of you, Lord. Touch your children with the word of God, Lord. Father, we pray against all bitterness, all anger, all envy, all strife, all competition, all jealousy, all unresolved trauma, unresolved issues, unresolved past hurts, past pains, uh, unforgiveness, bitterness, envy, strife, all of these things that keep us from drawing close to you. You said that we should lay aside every weight and every sin that sets us back, Lord. Let us lay aside these things, Lord, and not hold on to these things, Lord. I pray for myself. I pray for all of the body of Christ, Lord. I pray for my family members, Lord. I pray that we would all deal with our unresolved trauma, Lord, and that we wouldn't use ministry to cover up our hurt our pain, our trauma, Lord, that we wouldn't use being busy, Lord, to cover up those areas, but that we would expose them to you, Lord, so that you can transform us, Lord, so that we can be real with you, Lord, and that we wouldn't use religion and hide behind religion to cover these issues that go on in our hearts and our minds, Lord. You love us, Lord. You care for us, Lord. You are our Father, Lord. You died for us to set us free, Lord. We thank you so much for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, Lord. Please keep us, Lord, as the old folks would say, in the hollow of your hand, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, teach us your word, teach us your way, Lord, and let us get away from pride and bitterness and all of these things that we hang on to, Lord, the flesh, Lord. The flesh, the flesh, the flesh gets in the way or tries to get in the way of the work of God, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us have a forward thinking mind and move forward. Let us not be those that get stuck on things, Lord, and stay there and let them linger and let them fester, Lord. And these are things that you said a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, Lord. Show us how to grow up in you, Lord, and show us how to reach for you, Lord, through it all and push through, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you guys. Thanks uh, for joining us. We hope that you're having a wonderful uh, evening. We're going to get into the word here a little bit, and then we're going to have some announcements after we get into the word of God. Um, We are talking about, well, we're going to come from John chapter, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 3. Uh, John the Baptist's encounter with Jesus Christ. The scripture is not for us to win, use it to win arguments. That's not what the Bible is for. The Bible is for us to draw closer to God. Now, how do we draw closer to God? 
through the person of Jesus Christ. That's how we draw closer to God, through the person of Jesus Christ. In fact, we only know who God is through Jesus Christ. It is in the face of Jesus Christ that we get to see who the true and living God is. Nobody else can show us what God is like but Jesus Christ. In fact, the scripture says that he is the express image of his person. He is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. It is in the face of Jesus Christ that we find out who God is. And I'm praying for the body of Christ. I'm praying for all of our brothers and sisters that we wouldn't go through the motions. We would go after God and have a true encounter with God. But in order to have a true encounter with God, we have to put off the old man. When Moses had his encounter at the burning bush, what did God speak to him out of the burning bush? What did he say, Moses? He says, Moses, take off your shoes for the place where on you stand in this holy ground. Take it off. In order to have an encounter with God, in order to approach him, we there are things that we must take off first. I'm learning this in my life, first of all. You know how people say, I don't know who needs to hear this, or I don't know who this is for. It's for you. <laughs> it's for me. That's why God gave it to me first. It's for you. I don't know who needs to hear this. You do. And I do. If God give me something first, the husband must, must be first partaker of the fruit. Right? The former, when his crop comes, he tests the fruit out first. So when God gives you a word, it's for you. And then he gives it to you to dispense it, uh, to disseminate it to the information to the, the, the people of God. But Moses, he had to take it off. You can't come into God's presence and God's holy presence and his holy character carrying all of this baggage. And we're going to get to Matthew chapter three. I just want to minister real quick. Carrying all of this baggage. I, listen, man, there are too many of us, us, I put myself in there, ministers that are trying to lead God's people. And we got so much unresolved trauma. And the unresolved trauma, it comes out in our preaching. It comes out in our relationships. It comes out while we trying to walk with God. This unresolved trauma, it comes out in our attitudes. It comes out in the way we conduct ourselves. It comes out when we're squeezed, right? You know, the analogy of the, the sponge, you don't even, you can't tell the sponge is full of water until what? You squeeze it. And when we're squeezed, all of this stuff come out of us. But these are the things that God wants us to take off. And who is the barometer? Jesus Christ. Nobody else. We don't measure our, our character by nobody else but Jesus Christ. So he says to Moses, he said, take off your shoes from off your feet for the place whereon you stand is holy ground. That must be our intention when we come into prayer. Our intention is not to get knowledge. No, that's a byproduct of following God and to get wisdom and to get all those things. Yes, God give us those things. But our main focus when we come in contact with God and reading and praying, the purpose of reading and praying and fasting is to strip yourself. That's what this whole thing is about, becoming like Christ. It is to strip yourself. There's nothing worse than spending so much time reading and praying and fasting and never changing. No, nobody's perfect. No, we don't have it all together. But to spend year in and year out reading and praying and fasting and never changing and still having the same old attitude, the same old trauma, the same old hurt, the same old stubbornness, the same old arguing all of these things go on in the body of christ between brothers and sisters in christ all of these things 
take place. But we have to take these things off. We're too focused on becoming something that we're not ready for. And I told somebody earlier, I said, you can, you can, the more you, if you putting out more than you taking in, that's going to lead to burnout. Because I don't know how people go without praying, reading, and fasting sometimes, and just ripping and running in ministry. I don't know how they do it. I don't know. But we have to take these things off. He says, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Paul says, take off the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness of lust, and put on a new man, which is created after God in righteousness and in holiness. The purpose of reading, the purpose of praying, the purpose of fasting is to take these things off and that the light and the character of Jesus Christ will shine through us. I'm I'm sick. I'm sick of debating the Bible. I'm not arguing the Bible. I'm not doing ministry to be great. I'm not doing all of these things for following. All of this labor all of this stuff that we do never to become like Christ never never to learn how to treat our neighbor and love our neighbor never learn how to not let pride and and, and our emotions and our feelings control us do, to do all of this studying and reading and praying and just to snap out on my wife when she get attitude with me or we have a d- disagreement to snap out on my brother and sister in Christ to not speak to them and to, you know, it's just, why, why, why are we spending time in the Bible and, and, and doing all this Bible teaching and doing all this ministry stuff if we're never changing? What is the purpose of all of this? Is it not that we become more like Christ in our lives? Not just when I get around the church. Hey, you know how we put on that religious facade when we get around the church. God bless you. How you doing, brother? Hey, amen. Praise the Lord. Go home. My wife say something to me. Cook me something to eat, woman. You know, I don't say that to Jasmine. She throw a shoe at me. (laughs) Oh, man. So here's the thing. We have to, we have to, you fight. We have to change right we have to spend time in god's word and let it transform our hearts like i made a video not too long ago and a few days ago maybe or two three days ago or two days i'm not in ministry to get my name on on lights i'm not chasing the bag i'm not chasing fame I'm not trying to be great. I'm not trying to get a following. I don't want none of that. None of that. I'm here to, first of all, for me to be transformed. Me, myself, to be transformed first. Because that's the problem. We really can't help people if we still have unresolved trauma. Too many Christians are walking around with unresolved trauma. You can't have a conversation with them. Grown men, as soon as you say something to them, they're ready to block you. As soon as you try to talk to them, they get offended. We got all this Holy Ghost power. We do all this preaching, all this teaching. And Christian men, I'm going to tell you this. I, now, I haven't been in the world. I've been in the church. Christian men, we are some of the most easily offended creatures on earth. Because we carry a lot of unresolved hurt a lot of unresolved pain a lot of unresolved trauma and we're trying to operate in ministry and and fake as if we're ready for certain positions and we're not ready for it but it's all about an encounter with jesus christ let me look at matthew chapter 3 real quick and i'm gonna get out your way we're talking about an encounter with jesus christ john the baptist has um started his ministry the reason why i say his ministry because the bible says his baptism he has started his ministry now look john the baptist we are matthew chapter three um john the baptist 
he had no authenticating miracles. Think about this now. John the Baptist had no authenticating miracles. He had no white stallion. He didn't have a, a entourage like, like what Christians want nowadays. Christians want an entourage. They don't know who you are. They don't know what God has put in you. They lost you. When they lost you, they lost, you know, when it, it's all about the person. When they lost you, they didn't know what they, they didn't know what you carried. It's all about the person. The, this teaching nowadays is pathetic. Remember, it says that the days will come where they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We got people telling people what they want to hear because we want to keep them in the pews. John the Baptist come and he has a message for the people to turn to God. In fact, his message was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. We're not ready. We're not here to make ready a people prepared for things. A people prepared for Christian celebrityism. The Christian celebrityism is 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 getting out of control. What happened to teaching people? to fast and to pray and to have an encounter with God. We had, we got this seeker friendly message. John the Baptist had no authenticating miracles. He had no entourage. He had no big white horse. He didn't ride in valiantly on a horse. And that, am I insinuating that people should live like John the Baptist eat locusts and wild honey and have a camel hair for clothes. No, I'm not insinuating that. Although locusts and wild honey are good for protein. But I wouldn't suggest that anyone eat that. I'm not suggesting that we live like John the Baptist. No, I'm not suggesting that at all. But what I am suggesting is that suggesting is that you can have a plain, ordinary, ministry and work of God and be successful, right? John the Baptist didn't have none of those things, but the Bible says, yet went out to him all Judea and the region round about Jordan to be baptized of him, confessing their sins. That's a successful ministry. What, what, what makes people want to come to you so you can point them back to God. What what is it? What did they see in John the Baptist? Because he didn't have no 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 money. You know that that's the biggest lie that that the church is told. You you want people you want to influence people. You want them you want you want them to believe that God is with you. You got to have money. You got to have things. How are you going to tell people God can bless you if you ain't blessed? Well, John the Baptist had a successful ministry without those things. You know what they saw in John? That made his ministry so successful? One thing. Authenticity. He was real. Let's read it here. Verse, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Get ready for God. Get right with God. That's been the message. From day one, and it's still the message, even though we're in an age where people are changing the message, making it about you and your anointing and you and your business and you and your calling and you and what God got in you and who you are and who you this and you that. That message has always been turned to God, put off the flesh. For this is he which was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. Watch this now. Saying, verse 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Now, in that original text in Isaiah 40, he says, every hill shall be brought low and every valley shall be made, uh, brought up and the rough places straight and the crooked places plain. So what he's talking about is in those days, they would prepare 
they even call it the King's Highway coming from the east, I believe, all the way from, uh, I want to say, Saudi Arabia area, which was the old Babylonian Empire, all the way to Jerusalem. It was a trade route, but they had something called the King's Highway. And what they would do, they would level out the highway and make the rough places straight and the crooked places plain. So when the king came, he could descend on the city with his blessing for the city and bring his blessing for the city. And that was a physical highway. John the Baptist's job was to do what? Prepare a spiritual highway. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. That was John the Baptist's job to, to prepare a spiritual highway. And that spiritual highway was the hearts of the people to prepare the people and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's what our job is. But in order for us to do that, we got to make sure that we're stripped and we're empty first. Why do you think John the Baptist was in the wilderness until the day of his show into Israel? Why do you think John the Baptist lived where he lived? He was in preparation. Now, again, I'm not suggesting we live like that, but the whole message is to be prepared. You ain't being, you ain't preparing for ministry arguing over the Bible. You ain't preparing for ministry trying to win debates, theological debates. You prepare for what God has called you to do by constantly stripping yourself. And as God bring these things to your attention, I don't know about you, but when I go into prayer, God don't show me nobody but myself. You could have handled that a little different. You should have said this. You shouldn't have said this. You should next time when this come up, I want you to do this. Or next time, I don't want you to say that. God shows me me in prayer. He don't show me what nobody else needs to change. He shows me what I need to change. And it's up to me as the Holy Spirit reveal these things to me to execute them and don't be stubborn and don't blame nobody else for the way I am. So when he revealed these things to you, you execute it. That's the spiritual highway. John the Baptist was in the desert preparing for the work that God has called him to do. Look at this now. And in, in, in the same John, I just said this, and the same John had his raiment of camel hair and, le and a leathern girdle about his waist and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and Judea and all the region round about Jordan uh, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Right? John, John's baptism, John used water to symbolize repentance. He had the baptism of repentance. The water baptism that John used, it symbolized their repentance now watch this now this is a little a little side teaching here and this is why we here at abiding in christ ministry we're not so quick to baptize people we're, we're not so quick to baptize people we try to give people a, a foundation make sure they got got a foundation first you got to have a foundation first because look the people the people john john is baptizing people who are confessing their sins. And John, remember, John is full of the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. And so the Holy Ghost gives him discernment on who is ready for baptism and who is not ready for baptism. So all of a sudden, you have these people coming, confessing their sins, right? And they were baptized of John, right? And John said nothing to those people. He just baptized them because they were ready for it. And we're going to get into some theology here, but listen to what I'm saying. They were ready for baptism. Everybody that you encounter is not ready to be baptized. A lot of times we want to go out and, and, and baptize people. First of all, you got to get saved first before you get baptized, but that's another conversation. We want to go out and, and, and baptize people just so we can count numbers. We try to quantify the move of God we want to baptize people so fast just to say oh they, this person got back they got saved they got saved right 
Now watch what John does. He, remember, he's baptizing these people. And all of a sudden, look at this now. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. Now what does that mean? Bring forth therefore fruits, fruits meet for repentance. John is saying, y'all hypocrites. You coming to my baptism, you, you ready to be baptized? Prove it. Prove that you're ready to be baptized. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. Show me some fruit that, that proves that you repented. That's how I know for a fact that water baptism can't save nobody. Because if it could save them, John would have just baptized them. See, these people that came first, the people that he baptized, he baptized them, right? He didn't say nothing to them because they were ready and they were sincere for the water baptism. But when he's religious, he called them a, a brood of vipers. He said, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He says, you ready for baptism? Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Prove to me that you're ready for baptism. Where's your fruit at? Where's your fruit at? And look what he says in the next verse. He says, and think not to say unto yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Don't try to use your spiritual heritage to get in with God. Think not to, to say that we have Abraham to our father. They're trying to use their lineage and their connection with Abraham to get in with God. He says, for I say unto you, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Yeah. <laughs> Jasmine, my wife said, is that the same as the Hebrew Israelite? Yeah, they try to use their spiritual heritage to get in with God. We're the true Israelites, we're this, we're that. God, and then later on, God did raise up stones. It's the Gentile nations. Dead nations. Symbolized by these dead stones. God raised them up and grafted them in. But look, that is so key what John says to them. He says, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance you say you're ready for baptism let me see some fruit to prove it some 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 fruit that says that you repented it's a changed lifestyle that's the greatest evidence of salvation a transformed lifestyle not being baptized not speaking in tongues not laying on of hands not preaching not casting out devils that's why Jesus said, many will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not? Their lifestyle, they never had an encounter with God. They had an encounter with works. They had an encounter with religion. It's about an encounter with God and letting God transform you. If we're not teaching people to be like Jesus, what are we teaching people then? To go after the bag, to go after ministry, to go after cars, to go after houses. What are we teaching people? What are we teaching people? Isn't the whole goal of this thing is to let our light shine that men may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven? Are we not his workmanship created in Christ Jesus with God had before before ordained unto good works? It is God that worketh in us, making us willing and able to do of his good pleasure. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Isn't this whole thing, this whole walk with God, the fact that he translated us from darkness? And to the marvelous light from the kingdom of Satan over to the kingdom of his dear son. Isn't the whole thing for us to shine as lights in the kingdom and to win souls? Isn't the whole purpose of this thing is to have a transformed life? So that people can see our lives. We are living epistles seen and read of men. Isn't it the purpose of this? It's all about an encounter. John says, I'm not baptizing y'all. Y'all hypocrites.
Now, let me go down to verse 13, because John rebukes the, the religious leaders of that day, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Why were they called Sadducees, Jasmine? Because they were sad, you see. <laughs> Verse 13, then cometh Jesus, glory, glory, I'm about to preach now, then cometh Jesus, just that name, then cometh Jesus, oh, from Galilee, the prophet from Galilee, come on, man. Man, there's nobody like Jesus. But look at the example. Look at the example. Jesus, the son of the living God, the spotless lamb, the sinless one, coming to a water baptism. Well, water baptism was for sinners. Jesus is not a sinner. So why is he coming to John's baptism? Why? Why would the sinless son of God need to be baptized? And John's baptism is a baptism of repentance. So why is Jesus being baptized if he doesn't need to be repent, if he doesn't need to repent? We're going to get some answers right here. Let's look at it. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, or John said, no way. Now look, this is how you measure yourself. You don't measure yourself to people. You measure yourself to Jesus. John the Baptist, with his successful ministry, being filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, a powerful preacher, he came in the same measure and spirit that he lies, the same measure of the Holy Spirit that Elijah had. He shall come in the spirit and power of Elijah. That means he had the same measure of the spirit. We saw how God used Elijah in the Old Testament. He had the same measure of or the same capacity to do ministry on the level that Elijah did it on. But John says, What? You coming to my baptism? I have need to be baptized of you, but you coming to me? See how, see how when you when you encounter Jesus Christ, see how you see yourself. You see how you see yourself? I have a hard time listening to preachers who constantly make videos. I'm talking about social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. You name it. I have a hard time listening to preachers who constantly make videos about other people falling. How do you see yourself? Do we make these videos about people just to feel good about ourselves? Do we like to see people fall? Do we want to have something to talk about? Are we looking for a following? Are we looking like for likes and views? Or we say, I, I, I'm called to expose the darkness. Man, expose the darkness in yourself. You don't want to talk about that. John says, I need to be baptized by you and you're coming to me? You see, you see how you see yourself when you come in contact with Jesus? That's why we're talking about an encounter with Jesus. John the Baptist had an encounter with Jesus. The end of the Old Testament is meeting the new covenant. John is the last of the Levitical priesthood. That represent the Old Testament. All the prophets prophesied until John, the Bible says. This baptism is about many things. One is about John encountering Jesus and seeing himself as weak and flawed and needy 
and a sinner and lowly. We have to have that view of ourselves. Yes, God gives us sufficiency. And yes, God gives us a better outlook and he gives us wisdom and understanding. But as long as we see ourselves through the mirror of Jesus Christ, we won't get puffed up. John says, I need to be baptized by you. What are you doing at my baptism? I'm the sinner. And notice John is not talking about water baptism when he says, I need to be baptized by you. He says, he that cometh after me is mighty than, than I am, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That has nothing to do with water. See, water ain't got no water, ain't going to give me no power. But the Holy Ghost and the fire of God will give me the power. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's what's going to transform my life. The spirit of God. The fire of the word of God is going to burn up all of my dross. It's going to purge me. It's going to cleanse me. It's not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh rocks in pieces. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John said, I need to be baptized by you and you're at my baptism. Now, I've done a real study on this and I thought I, thought I taught on this before. When, when the scripture says here that John forbade him saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me. When he says that I uh, that John forbade Jesus, and I, I'll bring these words out maybe in another study, but I'm sure I taught on it before. The Greek there is that John literally pulled Jesus to the side and said, ain't no way I'm baptizing you. When it says he forbade him, that means he physically touched Jesus as he was walking down in the water and got close and pulled him aside. Listen, I'm not baptizing you. What you doing here? That, 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 that was an intense conversation. And Jesus says, no, no, John, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So now, after John sees himself in front of Jesus, the holiest mirror you could stand in front of, woe is me, for I am undone. Listen, measure yourself up to Jesus, and you'll see who you are. Don't measure yourself. I can measure myself up to people, and I feel good about myself. I ain't never. I ain't do that. I ain't cheat on my wife. I ain't do this. I ain't look at him. Look how he doing. Look at Kurt Franklin dancing at a theater. He's leading guys. I ain't do that. I ain't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't do what this person did. I didn't know what this person. Look what this Christian fallen. Now measure yourself up to Jesus, and keep your mouth shut. Keep measuring yourself up to other Christians fallen. And the world measure yourself up to Jesus you'll go in your closet and cry that's why we so quick to talk about Christians when they fall because we measure ourselves up to other Christians because if I measure myself up to Jesus I would just pray for Christians when they mess up because listen if I don't keep myself humble under the mighty hand of God there go I too So write this down if you guys got taken notes. At the baptism of John, you see the end of the Melchizedekian priesthood. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The end of the Levitical priesthood and the inauguration of the Melchizedekian priesthood. John, who is a Levite, his father of the daughters of Aaron, his mother of the daughters of Aaron. John is a Levite. John is a priest. And as a priest, what did John say? Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John the Baptist, as a Levitical priest, he is qualified to examine Christ. He is qualified to say that he has no blemishes. And he is ready for sacrifice to take away the sin of the world.
So when he's baptizing him, you see the end of the Levitical priesthood and the inauguration of the Melchizedekian priesthood, and that's found in the book of Hebrews. But that's why John the Baptist says, I must decrease and he must increase. So why would Jesus Christ come to a baptism that was for repentance, that was for sinners, if Jesus is not a sinner, therefore he don't need to repent? Number one, John used the water baptism to identify Jesus as Israel's Messiah. And we find that in the Gospel of John 135, where John the Baptist says, Therefore came I baptizing with water that he may be made manifest to Israel. That's the first reason. He used it to identify the Messiah to Israel. Not that Jesus needs to repent, not that Jesus is a sinner. Number two, those priests at the age of 30 years old were baptized into the office of priesthood. They would have a ceremony and baptize priests before they went into their priesthood. Number three, Jesus Christ is identifying with the human race. Now think about this now. John recognizes the character of and the nature of Jesus Christ. He recognizes that this is the son of the living God, the sinless lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world and he does not want to baptize him. But Jesus, he says, thus it becometh thus to fulfill all righteousness. They, 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 it was their jobs to bring this to fulfillment. There are some things that God is going to call us to do so that righteousness can be fulfilled. And we can't be in our pride. You see how Jesus Christ, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, made himself of no reputation. He submitted himself to the limitations of the flesh. He humbled himself. He humbled himself to be baptized by a sinner and be a part of a baptism that was for sinners. But we how, how, we so prideful, we are nothing like Christ. And here, the Son of God is at a baptism that's for sinners. All because he is identifying with sinners. Listen, saints, it's all about an encounter with Jesus Christ. If you ain't teaching God's people to go after Christ, you're wasting your time on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. You're wasting your time. I, at one point, I used to watch videos and say, oh, I just want to support my brother and and listen, you know what I mean? Show my face and all that. But I don't even do that no more because we're not talking about nothing no more. We're not. I mean, I'm just going to say it. You, you sit and listen to people teaching. They're not, I, I'm not, that's not drawing me close to Christ. You talking about somebody cheating on their wife. You talking about another Christian falling. You talking about winning arguments. No, nah, man, point me to Jesus. We have to get close to Jesus Christ because the time is going to come. The time is going to come where we don't know where this world is going. And we have to be in a position and in a state of mind, and a state of spirit that say, hey, naked I came into this world and naked I'm leaving. But if we're teaching people to be so attached to the things of this world, they will have a if he bless me faith. Instead of a though he slay me faith. God's people need God. They don't need money. They don't need titles. They don't need a position. They don't need a business. They need God. 
Now, once God give you those things, because God is first, you won't go after those things. Those things won't control you. You will make sure that feeding your spirit is priority over feeding your pocketbook. Because if you have the right character and you have the right mindset, if your mind is set on things above, once God do bring those things into your life, you'll be able to manage them. You'll be able to handle them. You'll be able to lead people. John the Baptist, he sees himself through the eyes of Jesus. He says, I need to be baptized by you. We have to always make sure that Christ is the barometer. He's the bar. Christ is the bar. Not another human being, not another minister, minister, not another pastor, not a brother in Christ, not a sister in Christ. Measure yourself up to Jesus. And as long as you measure yourself up to Jesus, you'll stay on your knees. You'll stay humble. You won't look down on your brother and sister when they mess up. It's God we're going after. It's God we're going after. It's God we're going after. We're going after God. We're going after God. Not ministry. Not titles, God. We're not chasing the bag, we're chasing Jesus. We're not chasing the following, we're chasing Jesus. We're not chasing knowledge, we're not chasing arguments, we're not chasing debates, we're chasing Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, let us put away unforgiveness, strife, bitterness, anger, resentment, pride, pride, Lord, pride. You said only by pride comes contention, contention, but with the well of eyes, there is wisdom. Only by pride. It is our pride that causes us to contend with you and with one another. It is our pride, Lord. Our pride gets hurt, Lord. Let us not be so prideful and stubborn and arrogant, Lord, but let us allow you to fight our battles, Lord. Lord, we're thirsty for an encounter with you, Lord. We're hungry, Lord, for you, Lord. We want a spirit that is filled with you, Lord. That water, Lord, that we will never thirst again. You say, he that drinks of this water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. Living waters, Lord. We want living waters, Lord. Those waters that will never fail us, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Your mercy, your love, your grace, your humility, your strength, Lord. Your long suffering, your meekness, Lord. The fruit of your spirit, Lord, the results of being in your presence, Lord, the results of being in your presence, Lord, the result of being in your presence, Lord. Lord, we admit our flaws. We need to be transformed, Lord. We need to be open with you, Lord. Let us not play the blame game, Lord, and blame others for the reason or the way we are the way we are, Lord. We are the way we are because of sin in our own lives. Because of our own pride, arrogance, stubbornness, rebellion. Lord, we confess our faults to you, Lord. We want to be filled with your spirit 
your presence, the fragrance of the Holy Ghost all over our lives, Lord, daily, Lord, that men may see our light, Lord, and glorify you, Lord. Let us, Lord, strip ourselves and be filled with your presence, Lord. Fill with your spirit. Fill with your joy, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill us with the Holy Spirit. You say it is your pleasure to give us of the kingdom, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord. But in order for something to be filled, it has to be empty first. As we empty ourselves out, Lord, fill us up with your Spirit. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, Lord. Let us not go through the motions Religious motions, Lord. But let us allow you to love us. Allow you to heal us. Allow you to transform us. I pray, Lord, for my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that they will stop wasting their platform arguing, debating, and looking for revenge and looking for enemies and complaining, and whining, and murmuring. Let us not waste this platform, Lord, but use this platform to glorify Jesus Christ, to point the church to Jesus Christ, and to point the laws to Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, for the men of the church, Lord. I pray that the men of the church, Lord, would set aside their petty differences and grow up. I pray for the women of the church, Lord, that they would allow the Holy Spirit and their prayer lives, Lord, to flourish, that they would walk with you in peace and freedom And that they will resolve any trauma that the enemy has put them through, Lord. And as that goes for the men as well, Lord, I pray that the men of God, all of us, Lord, would grow up and stop competing and gossiping and backbiting and hating one another and competing with one another and looking looking for enemies in the church and stop viewing their brothers and sisters as if they hate them. Let us get our minds right, Lord. Father, we need you in this hour that we can grow and walk in the liberty of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you guys. Thanks so much uh, for joining here. And I will post the podcast here uh, shortly. Thanks for joining on the podcast. I'll post the link for the podcast. Hallelujah.